Hello everyone. I'm here to talk about the new moon in Capricorn tomorrow morning and it is it happens to be 111 tomorrow, which I find significant. The other thing I really love is that we ended last year on this like Cancer full moon. The full moons are all about release. It's really about releasing things from the past, from our ancestral roots. And then we're beginning this year with a new moon in Capricorn where we're planting new seeds. And with it being on 111, something I love is, you know, the number one is, is about new beginnings, but it's also about being connected to source and being connected to oneness. And we can really get this feeling with this new moon being trined by Uranus and then uh, sextiling Neptune. So we have these outer planets that are communing with the moon, with our subconscious, and perhaps helping bring epiphanies, helping bring divine inspiration. It's a really good time to just brainstorm and collect ideas. And then it's also squaring Chiron in Aries. And um, I feel like we're inching towards this Chiron and North Node conjunction this year. And so... Um, we're, we're being invited to heal any self-doubt and um, wounds that are keeping us from being our truest selves and expressing ourselves in the truest way possible. And, you know, hopefully these seeds have that divine spark that we have within them, you know? So it's like planting these super genuine seeds. And the other thing I keep feeling is um, the reminder to take it slow because I think something we're practicing more and more is planting seeds and proceeding consciously. And I think for a long time, you know, we've sort of had these blinders on and we're just trying everything to see what works. And, you know, there's still going to be um, some experiment with things, of course, there always will be, but it feels like we're being asked to slow down and just have more intention and be more conscious with what it is that we're working on. Um, all of this is also kind of getting us ready for this major Pluto shift from Capricorn to Aquarius. And he's going to shift um, on the 20th, I believe, of this month. And he'll just be there for a few months and he'll go back into Capricorn one more time before he shifts to Aquarius. And this reminds me of when you're on your healing journey and you feel like you break through an old pattern and you're like, all right, I think I learned that lesson, right? And then you get this, this little chance a lot of times to be in a situation where you get to see how much you've grown. And so I feel like Pluto's last dip into Capricorn is going to give, that's going to be the lens we're looking through is like, wow, look how much this energy is our, is, is falling away and is no longer serving us. And, and as we move into Aquarius, I just, I feel a lot of rapid transformation, which again is another good reason to slow down because um, it's a lot of new energy, a lot of new territory, and a lot of um, uncharted territory as well. So it's like, how can we be wise explorers? You know, not completely discounting Capricorn energy, um, retaining, you know, some of the, the wisdom that in the patience, the patience is big that Capricorn brings. And all of this is hard for me. I'm an Aries rising. I do have a lot of Capricorn, but my Aries rising just wants to jump off the cliff and see if it works or not. <laughs> so we'll see how I proceed in doing that while also learning more patience. Um, so I wanted to pull a few cards. Ooh, actually I'm gonna start with my new one, my new deck. So my friend Erica pulled a guardian card for me from her goddess and gods oracle and she pulled Kali and I have been eyeing the Kali deck by Lana Fairchild for a couple of years now and it never felt right and when she pulled that card for me I knew I knew it was time and then um, I was talking to my friend Carrie 
and she said she was about to get it for me for my birthday, which is coming up. So that, I just thought that was kind of an awesome synchronicity. And the thing that I can't help but notice is, oh, this is perfect. It's on the bottom of the deck. I just want to show you really quick how she carries this sickle and it reminds me so much of Saturn. You know, um, Saturn is that he he has the sickle and it's like the lord of death and karma and it's about like cutting away what's no longer serving us and you know Kali can come in on your journey when everything's like just needs to be wiped away so you can really see like what wasn't serving you and she can also come in when you're embarking on um a new path and stepping more into an aligned way of being in your life and she she can come in to help support you in taking away fear and doubt and helping you to like press on press forward so I kind of feel hopefully that's <laughs> more where I'm at in my journey we never know but um, let's see what message Kali has for us on this new moon in Capricorn I feel like I gotta shuffle these good because they're new they all kind of like they s tend to stick together a little bit when they're when they're a new deck and the thing that I love about her is how fierce she looks but then she also has this gentle side so let's see what she has for us today oh my gosh <laughs> How appropriate. This is the third time I've pulled this card. <laughs> so look at her. She's pulled out this tongue. She's wearing yellow. Um, this card is Bagalamuki, card 23. And because I've already read this card a couple times, I can tell you that this is all about um, watching our words and watching our self-talk something else i think we're letting go of with the shadow of capricorn is really harsh self-criticism and self-judgment and we just had the venus gate and the solar plexus and i feel like that was an invitation to start releasing some of that to release the negative self-talk release the um, self-doubt and really hear the stories you're telling yourself and are they actually true or are you limiting yourself because you're afraid of your potential or you're afraid to change you know um change can be scary so I'm just gonna read the intro to this card because the descriptions in this book are really long and beautiful I I love Alana Fairchild okay so burning golden light of divine protection she arrests the flow of negativity particularly that of your own making she is in divine intervention and sacred activity she transforms our karma from that which hinders our joy to that which creates true happiness and bliss for ourselves and all beings as you seek refuge in her you are protected from gossip slander and any form of negativity from others a positive turning of the tide of fortune is predicted. And something I'm hearing with this as I'm reading this card as well is letting go of the fear of what other people think of you. And I really feel this huge opening and this hunger for wanting to learn more about our internal world. I feel this opening in people, like in the collective, in, in opening up to learning more things like this. So if you're in the work of self-development and things like that, I feel that being more widely accepted now in spirituality or people just having a more open mind. But even if they don't, we need to let go of worrying about it and um, press forward with our own truth, you know? Slowly but surely. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Bagalamuki. I love that card. Okay. And of course, with this earth energy, I've got to pull an earth magic card. What do we need to know? What, let's see, what energy can help us in planting our seeds? Something flew out before I even finished. I love when that happens fairies, earth magic. This is something else that was coming through. Um, 
because we have this trine to Uranus, today's a really good day or tomorrow, just this kind of time in general, while the, the sun and the moon are where they are for the next few days, to connect with the earth, to connect with the elements, to connect with plants, essential oils, herbs, teas, anything earth-based, just the earth itself. It's a really good time to connect with the higher consciousness of these energies or with the fairies, with the dragons, with the unicorns, the gnomes, the sylphs, the undines, with water, any of it, any elements, the air, any of it, any earth element. It's a really good time to connect with the higher consciousness of it. Maybe you can ask how it can support you. Um, also, the more we shift into this Aquarian age and this this transformation of um, the the Capricorn kind of, or not the Capricorn era, but the Piscean age that we've been in, which has kind of been an inversion of everything. Sadly, it's it's been a it's been some of the light of Pisces, but a lot of the shadow of Pisces as well. Um, moving forward, it's more about creating businesses and ventures and planting seeds that help sustain the earth and work with the earth's energies. Um, you know, hopefully we'll be seeing the release of free energy and um, free energy devices and things like that, working with frequency. But I feel like if we're working with the earth, we can connect with these elementals and we can all work together. And this can help us repair things on earth, repair a lot of the damage that's been done. And I think it can happen so quickly honestly if we if we get our acting gear on our side and start connecting with these energies and the earth is definitely bringing us some wake up calls to start paying attention and um i think we need to be cautious as well of the agendas that are out there as well you know about climate change and things like i think if we can go within and really connect with the earth our, ourselves we really can get to the deeper truths of, of what we need to do and how we can get with the program. Um, and just honor her, you know? Um, that's the other thing with this Capricorn moon that I'm noticing myself trying to move through a little bit is to let go of the, like it just came up in that card, let go of the self-judgment ju and self-punishment, you know? like. I think we fall into this like, oh my God, we've really abused the earth. We're so bad. Like that kind of thing, that kind of talk isn't very productive, honestly. It's good to have awareness, but then it's like we need to um, pick up from that awareness and then take action and, and be like, well, what can I do? What are ways I can improve, you know? And I think communing with the elementals is a really awesome starting point for... Um, it can even be as simple as just like walking in nature and getting quiet, you know? Hi, Beck. I'm going to pull one more card from my Atlantis deck um, as we are getting close to this Pluto shift and moving into this Aquarian age. What is this new moon in Capricorn getting us ready for with this shift? Ooh, love it. Athena, look at her with the owl. This is all about strength and intuition and being able to see through illusion. Your super heroic odyssey is admired. I'm going to look her up really quick. So this is that connection to the goddess and it's, it's really, it's like this strength of the goddess. Okay, 31. The gods and goddesses of ancient times, whether you connect to them through mythology or actuality, could be seen as our modern day superheroes, each one being bestowed with a superpower unique to their own purposeful existence. The philosopher Plato said Athena was the mind of God. In mythology, the Atlantisology Athena is a celestial companion to all who choose to take the hero's and heroine's journey embarking on a spiritual odyssey through time. 
Today, as you draw this card, I encourage you to see Athena akin to Wonder Woman of modern times, presenting truth, justice, and the wise way. She is with you, watching over your travels with great admiration and only wants the best for you. If at any, if at any time you feel unsafe in your super adventures, call upon Athena, Athena immediately to bring your kapow. And... um. And it says, you're more powerful than you believe. You are wiser than you can imagine. You are braver than you are ever told. There are happenings in your life right now, even if you have felt defeated because you have forgotten these facts. Why? Because the old negative self-talk, which has been passed down through generations, which is not your truth, has hindered your super powerful knowing that you can become a hero in your own life too. It's time to discover your own innate strengths by committing to personal development, spiritual awakening, physical transformation, and emotional healing. Call upon the energy of the goddess Athena as well and start to believe your life is about to become a whole lot better. And I love this energy combined with the Kali card we pulled. Look how similar they are to like the crown, the gold. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. And it's really like stepping into the strength and letting go of all of this like self-doubt, negative self-talk, and also knowing we don't have to do it all on our own, that we, we are so supported by the unseen realms, by the elements of the earth and these beautiful deities. And we can ask for their assistance in everything we're doing. So, um, Beck says... She almost bought a statue of Athena the other day. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I love her. So this is exciting energy, guys. I would love to know how you're feeling, what you're working on, if you want to share. And um, just wishing you the best. Give yourself a little self-love. Let go of that negative self-talk. I'm making note for myself, too. All right, love you guys.